All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, it's another video. Hopefully you find this video edifying as well as exhorting to the household of faith, the brothers and sisters of the household of faith. And uh, let me start by saying all praises and glory is due to the heavenly father, Yahweh. That's his true name, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem is ancient Hebrew for in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the only begotten son. So when we teach this gospel, when we teach these scriptures, essentially this truth, we teach it in the name, which is very important. We teach it in the name of the heavenly father, Yahweh. That's his true name. Bahashem Yahweh Shai, which, is, which literally means in Hebrew in the name of the only begotten son, which his name is Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rekakwadash, which is in the name of the Holy Spirit. And that's how we were instructed to teach this gospel. Let's go to Matthew to prove that. Let's go to Matthew, the 28th chapter. I'll give you the verse. And we were instructed by Yahweh Shai to teach, teach the gospel that way. As you clearly see here, these words are written in red. These were these words were said by Yahweh Shai. That's why they're written in red in the blue letter Bible. Matthew, then you have these red letter edition Bibles. Wherever, you know, wherever uh, you see the red, the red words, the red letters. Uh, that's what Yahweh Shai said. And of course, he said it in the Hebrew. And then later it was translated into the King's English. All right. So without further ado, Matthew 28 and 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Why all nations? Because you have the, Israel, the, the nation of Israel was scattered among all nations. So that's why we're commanded to teach all nations. But really the word, the knowledge, the understanding is for the Israelites. Begin with the elect. And the elect of the nation of Israel have been scattered among all nations. That's why it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them. And teaching is a baptizing, or teaching rather, is a form of baptizing. When you're when you explaining to the individual the scriptures and you, you're breaking it down to them, you're giving them the understanding of the parables, you you enlightening them. To the name of the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, and you, you're teaching them about the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, etc., etc. That's a form of baptizing. Okay, we, we baptize them with the Word. Let's go to Ephesians. That's why we don't do water baptism anymore. The water is really the Word. Remember what Yahweh Shai told that woman at the well? The, he, he, um, Use the metaphor of living water for the word, which are these scriptures, the understanding of these scriptures. Okay, this is Ephesians 5. And uh, 26. It says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water. The he is Yahweh Shai. With the washing of water by the word. So the, so the uh, water is a metaphor for the word. That's how you get cleansed by the word. Not by water baptism. You get cleansed by the word. This is uh, John 15 and 3. Again, these are the words of Yahweh Shai. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So that's what cleanses us. The understanding of the word, these scriptures. When we learn it and we apply it, it cleanses us. And it's only for the elect. Only the elect are going to be uh, cleansed, as it were. And the scriptures tell us that. Psalm 119 and 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. So that's what cleanses you, not no water baptism. You still got certain Israelites doing the water baptism thing.
Also, what cleanses us too, and that ties into uh, our lesson here, is suffering. <clears throat> I just thought about that. The suffering, because when you come into this knowledge, this truth, you learn this these words and you apply them, you're going to suffer. You are going to suffer. And that's what helps to cleanse us. Okay. As a matter of fact, let me show you that. Kept the word of my patience. Of my patience. All right. Of my patience. This is scripture. <clears throat> Again, these are the words of Yahweh Shai. Again, you see them written in red, but this time he was talking to the Apostle John and the Island of Patmos in the vision. He said this, Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Now that word patience, it literally means to suffer. A lot of people don't know that because a lot of people don't look up the meaning of words. I'll tell you what, we'll go to the etym online and we're going to copy the word we already copied it we're going to paste the word patience in there and let's look up the word and you will see that the word literally means to suffer patience now again let's go back to the scripture because thou has kept the word of my patience and i'm going to prove to you that really being in this knowledge is truth learning these scriptures learning these words and what they mean all right, you will suffer right along with learning those words and what they mean. You will suffer in this world. And there are many different forms of suffering being in this knowledge is truth. You, 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 uh, you will suffer ridicule because uh, the understanding of these scriptures is totally different to the so-called understanding of this world, night and day. So when you start really teaching what's in these scriptures, the world will, they will not like you. They will be against you. You will suffer the world's ridicule. And, and the word ridicule, I know the word ridi is um, Italian for laugh. That's how you say laugh, ridi, ridi, all right? So let's go back to patience now. Let's learn about patience. This is from the Etymology Online. Patience, all right, uh, patience, all right, uh, quality of quality of being willing to bear adversities. You see that? Right out the gate, man, it comes it comes out swinging, right? The, def <laughs> the definition of the word. You see, you see how important it is to look up words, man, especially the etymology of a word. Why do you think Apostol did that video, the importance of the importance of etymology? Scripture says, study to show thyself approved, man. There's no sh shortcuts in this thing of ours, man. You got to go, <laughs> I hate to use the term, you got to go balls deep in, in this ministry, man. Can't be playing around. And we, uh, beginning with Elder Pastor on down, we here at GMS, we don't play around. They can say whatever the hell they want to say about us. We're the worst camp, whatever they want to say. But when it comes to looking up words and getting into history and dates and all of that good stuff, we don't play around, man. So you better, if you come against GMS, this is the message to you, all you, all you, uh, you uh, cackling hens out there. You wacky tacky Christians, you decide to come against GMS. You better bring your A game, buddy. <laughs> you have been warned. Anyway, quality of being willing to bear adversity. So that's what this knowledge, this truth is all about. It's about suffering, man. That's the title of this video. Now, I, I had no idea it, the, <laughs> that proves that when you do a video, man, it's the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahshua that takes over. I had no idea I was going to go that route. Just on the word patience alone, I have proven the title of my video, which is question: What is this Hebrew Israelite ministry really all about? Answer: Suffering. 
Now, based upon the scripture here, Yahweh Shai said this, Revelation 3 and 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Like right now, I'm suffering these this noise that's out my window right now. Now, all during this morning, it was nice and quiet. You could have heard a pin drop. As soon as I start recording this video, here comes this crazy noise going on outside. This is the kind of shit we have to suffer, man. These demons coming at us. You know, these demons messing with us in our minds and in our bodies. The, 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 uh, the ailments that we got to suffer being in this knowledge, this truth. The demon of doubt, we got to suffer that, fight against that. You know, our own so-called families, and they're the worst kind, man, coming against us because of our beliefs. Oh, yeah, man, this, this ministry is about suffering, and a lot of Israelites don't understand that. Okay, they don't understand that. That's why eventually they fall out, you know, because they didn't prepare their minds for the suffering that you're going to endure whatever it may be that you're going to endure being in this ministry being called to this ministry but it's through the sufferings we are purified we are cleansed as it says in hebrews the second chapter the 10th verse you see <clears throat> so going back to the word patience quality of being willing to bear adversities calm endurance of misfortune and we're going to suffer that in this knowledge too. You know, you, you always seem to find yourself broke. I mean, we're going to get just enough to get by in this ministry. Yahweh Shai, when he taught us to pray, he said, give us this day our daily bread. That's just enough to get by. You're not brought into this knowledge, this truth to, be, to become carnally rich. What did the Apostle Paul tell Timothy? Let's read about it in 1 Timothy 6 and 9. See, a lot of Israelites think that this is an avenue, this, this knowledge, this truth is an avenue to become carnally rich. They, they err not knowing the scriptures. That's the last thing you want to be is carnally rich in this ministry. And if you are carnally rich or have become carnally rich, you better have the mentality of distributing. You better have the mentality of giving. And not trusting in those con those riches, those carnal riches. Because that's that will be your downfall. And I've seen it so many times going back to the main school. Okay, one West 125th Street. You had Israelites that actually became rich, carnally rich, that is, using the knowledge. And what happened to them? They fell out the truth. They fell out the truth, man. So I've seen it. So I'm speaking based upon experience. This is what the Apostle Paul told Timothy, right? So check this out. This is 1 Timothy 6 and 5. It says, Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. You hear, you hear what the Apostle Paul told Timothy? And it's, it's true to this very day, man. Let's read that in NLT. Sometimes the NLT is brut brutally simplistic, right? These people always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt and they have turned their backs on the truth. To them, a show of godliness or righteousness is just a way to become wealthy. Here you go. And you, you got a lot of Israelites with that mindset, man, in this thing of ours. You're trying to become rich. I think the artist was Callaway. I want to become rich or I want to be rich. Right? Uh, it's a song that came out years ago. Let's keep reading. It says, but godliness, meaning righteousness with contentment. And, and that's the thing. A lot of Israelites are not content. They, they want more than just getting by. They, they, wanna, they want their pie in the sky in this kingdom. And they're, and they're looking at this knowledge, this truth, as a way to get it, as a vehicle to become rich. They are not knowing the scriptures. All they're heading for is destruction. And I've seen it so many times, time and time again. Okay? That's the benefit of being in this knowledge, this truth, all these years, man. You learn, you, if you don't, 
You've been in something 35 years and counting. If you don't learn something, then you, you're just brain dead. If you don't pick up a few things along the way, you're just brain dead. Okay? 1 Timothy 6 and 6. But godliness, righteousness. What is righteousness? Doing this work. Teaching this word. Studying more and more. Every day in this ministry, we learn more and more. We will never stop learning in this ministry. I'm going to tell you all that again. You never stop learning in this ministry. You're always learning every day. <clears throat> You're always learning something in this ministry. Uh, 1 Timothy 6 and 6. But godliness with contentment. Contentment is great gain. Let's read that in NLT. Yet true godliness, righteousness, with contentment is itself great wealth. Exactly. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Right. Okay. And having, listen good, this is why Yahweh I taught us, give us this day our daily bread. Meaning just enough to get by, just enough to pay your bills, just enough to have food on your table. If you got a vehicle, just enough to keep your vehicle running. Right? Just enough. All right? I think the best way to be in this knowledge is truth is to live a minimalist lifestyle. Keep your, your possessions at, at bare minimum. Because all of this is going to be destroyed anyway. All of this stuff is going to be destroyed anyway. So what sense does it make to give your heart and soul to, to um, what's the word I'm looking for? To things that are going to perish anyway. It doesn't make any sense. Okay? 1 Timothy 6 and 8, And having food and remnant, let us dare with, or let us be dare with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. And again, like I said, I've seen that at the main school. Guys who became rich, guys, the money started rolling in and it corrupted them. They became corrupted to the point where they didn't want to teach anymore. They gave up the teaching. Okay, all they could think about is new creative ways of making money. When the money started rolling in, they became corrupted. They wanted to make more money. That's the thing about <coughs> this, this, these Federal Reserve notes. And that's why when you look at the so-called dollar bill, it's no coincidence it's got, it's got webs all over it. Because you become trapped. You become trapped by those webs. Look at the, look at the dollar bill. Look at that paper money. That thing is so demonic, it's amazing it doesn't vibrate in your pocket when you have it in your pocket. Okay? As a matter of fact, really what it is is a talisman. The American dollar bill is nothing but a talisman. Okay? You might say, well, what, it, what is a talisman? Well, I'm about to show you because a lot of you ain't going to look it up. You don't have the discipline to look up stuff. Most of you, Talisman. most of you ain't gonna look it up. But some of you brothers that are diligent, that are astute, you're gonna look up. You hear a term, you're gonna look it up and want to know what it means. <clears throat> all of a sudden, all this goddamn noise. I, I can't believe it, man. Well, I can believe it. It was so quiet before I started filming. <laughs> you can't make this shit up, man. But that's some of the stuff we have to suffer. So now I'm forced to speak louder, but it is what it is. Talisman. Talisman. An object, typically an inscribed ring or stone that is thought to have magic powers and to bring good luck. Well, in the case of the so-called paper money system, it, it, it brings bad luck. <laughs> All right? Because <laughs> it's, a, it's a wicked talisman. Okay? And that's why when you look at the dollar bill, it's filled with, with uh, demonic symbols on it. Okay. Anyway, 
going back to first timothy 6 and 9 but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts exactly which drown men in destruction and perdition see especially if you desire to be a man of the lord how about shimei shai because if you desire to be a man of the Lord, how about Shimei Shai? One of the things you're going to endure is suffering. So now if you become rich, as in carnally rich, in a way your suffering is, is over, so to speak. Okay? Because when you have money, when I'm talking about rich. You have lots of money. You know, you're able to do a lot of things that the average person cannot do. Okay? You're able to enjoy comforts that the average person cannot enjoy or afford right and it's through those comforts if you in this knowledge this truth like elder pasta always says it we have to become a stoic in this knowledge this truth to a stoic too much comfort is an enemy to a stoic too much comfort is an enemy you don't want to become too comfortable especially in this ministry you know lately i've been saying we have to get comfortable with the uncomfortable because the time period that we're heading into is going to be very 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 uncomfortable so we have to prepare our minds to get comfortable with the uncomfortable now again you got a guy that's trying to use this knowledge this truth to become rich he's looking to get comfortable that's why he's doing it he's looking to get comfortable and, and that's not what you want being in this ministry. Okay? <laughs> Matter of fact, there's a quick scripture that just came to my mind. Proverbs 23 and 6. So one of the things we're going to suffer is to be broke. Proverbs 23 and 6. Or 23 and 4. Or, yeah, well, you know what? I could start at the first verse. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee, and put a knife to thy throat. If thou be a man given to appetite, right? Put a knife to your throat if you be a man given to appetite. And, and that that filters out to uh uh you know to um living in this world man if you you have an appetite for the fine the so-called finer things of life in this world you better put a knife to your to your throat coming in this knowledge this truth because it's not going to work you know you're shia right let me give you an example high priest shia high priest shia that was his title back then excellent teacher great teacher okay but the thing with high priest shia and i got to keep it real is he was he was more prone to telling jokes than to teaching scriptures okay he was more prone to telling jokes the only time he would really go into the scriptures is if elder pastor was in his class you know you know uh uh teaching right along with him or this uh this uh uh guy by the name of uh Kukum, all right, I think he's still down with the ICGJC. I remember Kakum, and he I'm sure he knows me. All right, if he was in the class, then Yeshia was forced to go into the scriptures. But especially, I do remember, especially when Elder Pastor was in, in uh, Yeshia's class, High Priest Yeshia's class, he was forced to go into the scriptures. All that joke, joke telling went out the window. Now there's nothing wrong with telling a joke. Even we, we beginning from Pastor Tall and Down, we tell jokes every now and then. You know, tasteful jokes that add to the understanding, that add to the edification. But this guy, Yeshaya, man, I mean, if he was by himself, it was, it was, it was a, a, a night at the Apollo. Friday, he usually taught Friday nights at the at the school, One West 125th Street. It was Friday night at the Apollo, man. This dude was telling nothing but jokes. Okay? <sighs> you know, we got some woman out there. Got some woman out there talking shit all loud. <laughs> Boy, you can't make this stuff up, man. 
Anyway, going back to High Priest of Shire, right? He was known for telling jokes, right? But anyway, he he used to say this, right? He used to make a statement. He used to say, uh, you got to get the best. All right? You got to get the best. Now, I guess he, he lived what he what he was saying because he had three. Now, this is going back to the early 1990s. You had this car called the Infinity. All right. Y'all can look this up, man. The vehicle called the Infinity. That was back then. That was like top of the line. You know, it had that nice look about it, that chic look. Right. Anyway, this dude had three Infinities. And I remember, because I was back there, I know, I saw them, all three of them. He had, he had a, a white Infinity. I forgot what model it was. They had just came out, the Infinity. All right. And I, like I said, they were top of the line vehicles back then. I don't know how it is now with, the, with these cars, the Infinity, but back then it was top of the line. All right. You had to have money to get a vehicle like that. So you had, he had three. He had the white one, he had the red one, and he had the black one. Now, one of those vehicles, I don't know if it was all three, but I do remember one had in, in looked like gold letters on the side, high priest. Yeah, high priest. Okay. <laughs> so he used to always say, you got to get the best. So he was he was a guy, despite him being a, a, a good teacher, he was a guy driven by money. He had an appetite for money. He had an appetite for money, man. Now, here's the question. Where is your sh high priest Shia now? Where is he? You don't see him out there teaching. He doesn't make videos. He doesn't go into the scriptures. Many of you, you young brothers, you don't even know who high priest Shia is. And I remember a time when he was at the school teaching, going into scriptures and breaking stuff down and all of that. But what corrupted him? That's right, the money. The money corrupted him. You see? So like it says here, Proverbs 23 and 2, and put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite. So you can't, when you come into this knowledge is truth, you got to recognize what this knowledge is truth really is all about. It's about suffering. It's about suffering. So if you're the kind of guy, you got to have, you got to get the best. You got to have the finer things in life, in this so-called life. Then you're not going to make it in this knowledge, this truth. You're not going to, you, you, eventually you're going to fall out. Guaranteed. And you notice these other Israelite groups, they're not, they're, what you hear in here, they're not going to tell you this stuff. All they, all they want to do is show you the, the, the pretty side of being in this knowledge, this truth. No, there's a, <laughs> there's a, there's a serious dark side to being this knowledge is truth, man. The stuff that you, you're going to endure, the stuff that you're going to suffer. <laughs> and remember, we, we haven't really entered. We're at the doors of the time of Jacob's trouble. We're at the doors, I'll say that much. But we haven't really gone real, gone right into the time of Jacob's trouble. That's when we're really going to suffer. That's when our, fa our faith is going to be tested and all of that. You know, the, uh, the our darkest hour, that's approaching us, man. When it's going to come down to how just how strong is our belief in this gospel? Is it strong enough to withstand the adversity that we're going to go through? Okay? So, <laughs> uh, let's keep reading. It says, be not desirous of his dainties. Exactly. Just, just have enough just to get by. As the Apostle Paul said, using this world, but not abusing it. See, that's, that was the thing with High Priest Shai. He abused the world. He got too much in it. His thing was all about money. All about money. And a lot of guys, as I do remember at the main school, you had a lot of dudes that they, when the money started rolling in, this was had to be around 1992, late 92, going into 93, when they came up, they, and they were always coming up with programs at the main school. They was always coming up with programs to make money. All right, to make money. The same thing we're seeing now. Guys come into this knowledge is truth. All of a sudden, they, they, they start 
marketing their brands. They're making t-shirts and they're making hats and all. You think we haven't seen that bullshit before? We've seen it before. And the guys who were doing it back then, eventually they failed. And it's the same, it's going to be the same story for the dudes that are doing it now. That's the thing with these young guys. They think that they're prolific, you know, that, that what, they're, what they're doing hasn't been done before. We got news for you, you, young, you youngsters in this thing of ours. We've seen it before, okay? That's the problem with these young dudes, okay? They don't understand that the, that the old heads have seen what you're trying to do. The old guys have seen it before. It didn't work back then. It ain't going to work now. You cannot be cornerly rich and be in this knowledge is truth. As it is written, blessed are the poor for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. As a matter of fact, let's leave this for a minute. Oh, boy. Okay, it's a spam call. All these, all these distractions, I tell you. Uh... You won't believe it, man. Before I started filming for, for hours, I was, I was um, in my room. I wasn't getting any distractions. As soon as I go to record this, this, this lesson, all kind of distractions. The noise, that crazy woman outside shooting her mouth off, and now the phone ringing. <laughs> That's why I put it on Do Not Disturb. I'm glad I did. Usually I forget. Let's go to... Um, there's a scripture I wanted to bring out. There was a scripture I wanted to bring out, man. It kind of escaped me. Uh, forgive me, brothers. Maybe it'll come back to me. But anyway, Proverbs 23 and 3. <clears throat> it says, Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. You see that? They are deceitful meat. <laughs> hey, uh, reading on, labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Exactly, because again, you got a lot of Israelites that don't understand what they're involved in. They look at this knowledge, this truth as a way to become rich. But here the scripture says, labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Right. Have just enough to get by. Okay. Uh, reading on, it says, Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. See that? So that's the thing with these so-called carnally or these so-called carnal riches. They're deceitful meat. The real riches is being rich in understanding of this knowledge, this truth, being rich in faith, being rich in suffering, because suffering it 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 uh, uh it toughens us up. Like the scriptures say, endure hardness as a good soldier. You know, a lot of brothers hate to suffer, but it's through the suffering we become purified. Never forget that. Um, as a matter of fact, suffer not. Let's get that scripture before I get the one. Suffer not as a... And we got to suffer the right way because the Apostle Paul said this, suffer not as a oh, not, let me see if it comes up yeah oh did I say Apostle Paul it was actually Apostle Peter okay 1 Peter 4 and 15 let's go there right quick because this knowledge is truth is about suffering but it's suffering the right way in other words don't go around causing trouble heaping on trouble to yourself because you can't control yourself, you lack discipline, you go around starting trouble with people and then you, you end up suffering that way, suffering adversity that way. That's not the right way to suffer. Okay, I'm just giving you one example. First Peter 4 and yeah, First Peter 4 and 12. 
Share the sufferings of Yahweh Shai. You see that? Suffering for being a Christian on the NLT side. We'll read both. Twelfth verse. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, to test you. And that happens as soon as you come into this knowledge, this truth. You suffered in the world, but get ready to really suffer. Because we have to be tested. We have to be tried. Every member of the elect is going to be tried and tested. To the point where they think they're going insane. Can you imagine the sufferings that Yahweh I went through in the, in, on that cross, man? The, the three hours, I always think about that. The three hours of excruciating pain that he had to endure. That's not a joke, man. That's not a. That's not fantasy. That actually happened. That's reality. Yahweh she. Yahweh Shai, not Yahweh She, Yahweh Shai was, was on the cross, man, and endured all that pain, okay? He, he was on the cross and he endured all that pain for three hours, excruciating pain, to the point where he cried out, man. And he, he asked the, the Heavenly Father, why have you forsaken me? What did I do? Why have you forsaken me? Which, in reality, the Heavenly Father didn't forsake him and then in 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 the uh, book of isaiah the 53rd chapter it said it pleased the lord to bruise him so think about that man so if yahweh shai was being tested like that it's not us that's not going to be tested like yahweh shai said the, the 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 servant is not greater than his lord the servant is not greater than his master okay so we got to get it into our minds you brothers and sisters you're, you're in this knowledge, this truth now. You, you're privy to all these secrets. You're privy to all this understanding. You, you're going to suffer for it. We're going to suffer for it. Because that's a test. We're really going to suffer when Esau make that microchip mandatory. But there's a light at the end of that dark, dark tunnel. We're not always going to suffer. Okay? As we get closer and closer to Yahweh Shai coming... We're going to get relief from suffering. Okay? 1 Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. And that's why that's why certain guys tap out. They say, man, I can't deal with this, this Israelite stuff, man. You know, this thing is too hard for me. They did not put in their mind what was at stake the scriptures speak about counting the cost whether you have enough to finish the job they didn't they didn't understand what they're involved in because their instructors their teachers didn't tell them what this thing of ours is really all about that's why i'm doing this video i've done tons of videos on that very same stuff subject but here's another one of those videos what is this hebrew israelite ministry really all about that's the question the answer is suffering, suffering. That's what it's really all about. Okay? And the different forms of suffering. All right? All what you're going to endure being in this faith. Let's read that in NLT. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. Back to the KJV. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Yahweh Shai's sufferings. You see? So the suffering starts with Yahweh Shai, and that's what perfected him. Oh, now I remember. That's where I was going to go. Hebrews 2 and 10. As a matter of fact, let's go to that real quick. Hebrews 2 and 10. So we should not run away from the sufferings that is brought upon us through the Holy Spirit to prove us, to test us for being in this knowledge, this truth. Even King David said in Psalms, Psalm 26, he said, test my integrity, O Lord, and see if I will not cling unto you. The same thing with Job. Job's integrity was tested. And what did Job do? He cling even heavier. He cling unto the heavenly father until he prevailed. So we're going, we're going to do the same thing, man. No matter what the hell we go through, we're going to cling on to Yahweh Barshim Yahshah until we prevail. We're not just we're not going to give up and, uh, and uh, go back into the this this world. 
and try to enjoy the so-called pleasures of this world. That's stupidity, man. That's not progression. That's that's digressing. That's not progressing. Hebrews 2 and 10, it says, no matter what carrot is dangled in front of us, we're not going to fall for the okie doke, man. We're going to cling unto Yahweh Shimeo Shai through suffering righteously in this ministry, man. That's that's our mindset. Because yeah, we, because we're the elect, we're built for this. Okay, Hebrews two and ten it says, "For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons, that's us, the hopeful elect, unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation. Who's the captain of our salvation, brothers? Yahweh Shai. That's the that's our captain." He's the captain of our salvation. His very name means salvation. So it says, In bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through what? Through sufferings. Perfect through sufferings. So we should not run away from the sufferings brought upon us by the Holy Spirit for this ministry. We should wholeheartedly embrace it and pray for strength to endure it pray to you and that's why praying is so important that's why we begin with elder apostle Ricard. he's a big proponent on that the proponent of prayer that's why we should constantly pray to you how about to give us strength to endure the sufferings that we must endure in this ministry that's the smartest move we can make go to you how about in prayer and pray to you how about to give us the strength the mental strength to endure the sufferings that we must endure being in this knowledge, being in this truth. Because it, it, it must needs be that we be tested every day to prove our worth. Yahweh Hashem Yashai ain't going to give us the, the glory of the kingdom without being tested, man. <laughs> you know, you can forget about that. Okay? So, Hebrews 2 and 10, the Most High for whom... And through whom everything was made, chose to bring many children into glory. And those are Israelites, beginning with the elect. And it was only right that he should make Yahweh Shai through his suffering. <coughs> see that? Through his suffering. A perfect leader fit to bring them into their salvation. So when I look at these other Israelites who, who are trying to turn this truth into a money-making bonanza, trying to become rich. I see they're trying to skirt away from the suffering. They're trying to bypass the suffering. Nah, man. You come into this knowledge, this truth, you have to embrace it. You have to embrace the suffering brought on us by the Holy Spirit. Whatever it may be. And these are facts. And these, these other, these fly-by-night Israelite groups, they ain't going to tell you this stuff. Because they don't even understand what the hell they're involved in. You know, Israel is picking up. More and more people are getting into it. So there's their angle. They, they see an angle to make money. To become rich. To enjoy the so-called finer things in life. Like my man Deacon Hakar, Hebrew in a Hellcat. Or was that Alazar? One, one of them. They're a perfect example of guys who using this knowledge, this truth, and the little knowledge that they did get. As it is written, knowledge puffeth up. The, the, little, the little knowledge that they did get, they're using it to, to uh, become wealthy. We've seen that kind before. It's nothing new. Okay, uh, where am I going here? Ecclesiasticus, the second chapter. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright. And, and you see, it's videos like this that help you to set your mind aright. To give you an understanding of what you're involved in, what you're about to get into. It's a thing of suffering, man. <clears throat> so if you if you can't stand the heat, you better get the hell out the kitchen. <laughs> All right, because if you're gonna cook, man, you're gonna get hot. Okay, so and you might as well get into the the, the heat because the real heat is coming. For those that reject this knowledge is true. The real heat is coming. Okay? So we might as well deal with the heat right now. Uh, how's that scripture go? Uh, 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 how's that go? Um, 
which is but for a moment. I know, um, let me see if I can find it, which is but for a moment, which is but for a moment. It should come up. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> this is, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> trying to clear my throat here, man. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Second uh, Corinthians, the fourth chapter. I'll start at the uh, 16th verse. For which cause we faint not. Oh, look at this, man. Look at this. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Bear with me for a minute. Second Corinthians 4 and 13. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore I, have I spoken. Right. You know what? That's a direct. Paul, Apostle Paul is quoting a, a direct passage from the Psalms. Something David said, King David said, and that's in Psalm 116, I believe it's 116 and 10. He said, I believe, first you believe this knowledge. Then he said, therefore I have spoken and you speak on it. I was greatly afflicted, right? I was greatly afflicted. Apostle Paul left out that part in, this, in, in, the, in the verse there. I believe, so you, you first, you hear the knowledge, you hear the truth, you believe in it. You've been given the gift of faith, you believe it. Then you speak on it. You stop teaching it and all that. What come next? You were what? Greatly afflicted. You see that? So you can't tell me that this knowledge is truth is not about suffering. King David said it. I, I have, I believed. I have, therefore I have spoken. I was greatly afflicted. That's in the Psalms. And this is what Apostle Paul is quoting here. Let's read it again. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. There you go. But what come after that? The affliction. The affliction. And that's what a lot of guys can't deal with. And that's why they tap out. Okay. But glory be to Yahweh Bashim Shah. He gave us a different kind of spirit. If we hang in there, man. We'll be like, like our forefather Jacob when he wrestled that angel. He would not let go. Until that angel gave him a blessing. That's us. We ain't going to let go until we get that blessing, man. Until we get that crown on our head. That's our mentality, man. We're in for the long haul. We're in for the fight. Okay? It says, Knowing that he which raised up the Lord, Yahweh Shai, shall raise us up, or raise up, shall raise up us also by Yahweh Shai. Yeah, we brought them before honor. Before honor comes humility. So we're brought down. We're humiliated. People talk shit about us. People come against us, etc., etc. It's all part of our suffering. Especially our own so-called family. But we know eventually we will get the honor. Before honor comes humility. You see that? So it says, Knowing that he which raised up the Lord, Yahweh Shai, shall raise up us also by Yahweh Shai. Literally going to be raised up into those chariots. That's First Corinthians, um, First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, and shall present us with you, for all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace, and that's what we're under. Guys fighting over, are we under the new new covenant? No, we're under the old covenant. No, we're under the new covenant. Man, we're under grace, man. And we're under the old covenant because we're under the curses. The old the the, the curses were a result of the old covenant. We couldn't keep the old covenant, which was to keep the law, statutes, commandments. Right? So we're under grace. Okay? We're under grace right now. To be delivered to the new covenant. Well, you're going to have guys that are going to fight back and forth over that. It is what it is. Let, let them, you know, let them be, let them wallow in their own ignorance. Okay? For all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound or redound <clears throat> to the glory of the heavenly father. Right. 
for which cause we faint not. Like I gave you an example of high priest Yeshai. Eventually he fainted. He's not out there doing the work. He's not out there on the street like he used to be. High priest Yeshai used to be out there on the street teaching. Passionately. Right? A lot of times he was actually putting on an act because he'd be out there on 44th and Broadway teaching and then at the end he would say, love, peace, and hair grease. I'm out of here. So it was like an act and he was he was a, he was like one of them dynamic speakers. You know, especially the women. They, oh man, they, the women love High Priestess Shia. Friday nights uh, uh, when his, his class was mostly women. I know I made that observation too. Mostly women. After a while, I stopped going to his classes. I wasn't, you know, you take notes at the class. I, I take half a page of notes with High Priestess Shia. His thing was he loved to go into that Byzantine history. The so-called Byzantine history. That was his thing. Okay, the 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 uh, what do you call it? The um, the icons and all of that, which is nothing wrong with that. But you know, you you want to really learn the scriptures. <clears throat> I'd say the top back then, the top man that you go to his class and really like three four pages of notes was Elder Pastor Hard. That, that, those are facts, and I'm not just saying that because I'm in Elder Pastor's camp. I'm in the ministry right along with him. Those are just facts. If you were back there, you would know what I'm saying is the truth. If you were back there and you were at the school at 1 West 125th Street and you was a guy who loved to take notes, you, look, if you went to an Elder Pastor's class back then, you would at least have three or four pages of notes for that evening. Those are facts. And he usually taught, Elder Pastor taught on Wednesday, Wednesday nights. And then I think later he took over the Monday night class. He took it over from Lahab after Lahab left, left the school. After they made all that pot of money, money. They made a fist, a fistful, a fistful pot of money. <laughs> and they, and they broke out. It was what, seven of them, was it? I forgot how many it was. A good many dudes, man. They made all kinds of money and they, they were gone. Okay. So there you go. 2 Corinthians 4 and 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, right? Yet the inward man, that's our spirit, is renewed day by day, right? We're getting more and more and more understanding. Even though we're broke, we're poor, and women ain't checking. See, women ain't checking for you because because you because you're poor. If you had all kinds of money, man, women, women, women have a they have an innate, look that word up. Somebody put the definition of that word innate ability to smell money on a man and at the end of the day with these today's women the, the thing that makes them google google gaga the most is money man you got all these these pundits uh red pill pundits blue pill red pill whatever uh this is the way you attract women this you know, one of the main things that attract women is money man if you got lots of money, you always got some bimbo bitch ready to help you spend it. And when the money is gone, guess who's gone with, right along with it? Yeah, that right. That's right. That bimbo bitch. She leaves right along with the money. So in this life, to, with today's woman, what, it, what interests them the most, what excites them the most, is a guy with a lot of money. All of a sudden, that guy with a lot of money, he could be the ugliest dude in the world. All of a sudden, he looks... Mighty attractive to that woman because he's because she's looking at the money. Look at Shaba Ranks. That dude had a face that could stop a charging gorilla, man. Right? <laughs> but he was making all when he was on his when he was at his pinnacle, you know, he he was making all kinds of money, right? He had all kinds of women. You know, Mr. Mr. Lover Man. <clears throat> You know, even uh, In the Living Color did a spoof on that guy, Mr. Ugly Man. But you always saw in his videos back then, you always saw him, you always saw women slivering around him like snakes. Yeah, they were trying to get some of that money. You see, and that's why certain dudes come into the truth, they want to make all kinds of money because they want to get those women. That's their main motivation, not... Their main motivation is not really understanding what they're involved in, as in this ministry. No, their main motivation is money, women, fame. That's their main motivation. You can spot these dudes. You can spot them. 
Okay? Well, guess what, brothers? And you few sisters that really believe, our main motivation is to suffer righteously for Yahweh Shai's sake. It's only right. Yahweh Shai suffered. We should suffer. That's called integrity, brothers. That's called integrity. We have integrity. Okay? Unlike these, these morons that came into the truth and didn't understand what they're involved in, didn't want to suffer, didn't care for it. Unlike them, we understand what we're involved in. And we're, met, we're ready to make that um, adjustment to deal with the suffering of Yahweh Bashim Oh, getting arrested. We've, we've gone through that. Getting arrested, being put in jail, or put in prison, not prison, well, well jail. You know? <coughs> yeah, man. All part of our suffering. Anyway, let's keep reading. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Now the Bible calls our affliction, our suffering, it calls it light. It is right there. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So you see the benefits of suffering righteously for Yahweh Shai's sake in this gospel? It works in us what? The Apostle Paul wouldn't lie. And he was, a, he was an example of suffering. Look at what he went through. All the shit that he went through. He, 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 uh, the Apostle Paul, he, la he labeled all what he went through too. In one of those scriptures, he said he was among false brethren. He said he was uh, uh, shipwrecked. You know, uh, speaking of shipwrecked, Apostle Tar and myself, we were shipwrecked. On our way to, this is years ago, we were on our way to uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut to teach a class. And this was at night. And at, back then, Apostle Tar had a, an escort, I think it was. It's one of them real small cars. And I think it was an escort. And it broke down on, right on exit 2 off I-95. And we had to spend the whole night until Elder Apostle Tar was able to get that vehicle out of there in the morning. Okay. He, he first of all he had to walk he had to walk uh into uh the town of Byram to back then he didn't have well you had him but we didn't have no cell phone okay he had to walk into the town of Byram I think to call uh his cousin Yohanaba to get us out of our predicament but all night we had to stay on that highway and he fell asleep man but me I couldn't really sleep because it was raining it was raining heavy too and them trucks was passing by and that little ass car was shaking man i kept thinking you know it might get hit you know so i had a that was i was new in the truth my, my faith wasn't really built up as apostle Tar's faith was or and is so i remember that night very very well but at least not that i could go anywhere but at least I didn't act like a, a, a little girl with an elder pastor, you know? At least I wasn't every oh, why are we on, what? whining like a woman, man. I just took it. Even though I was scared inside, I just took it. I just dealt with it. So I'm proud about that, you know? Yeah. So, we, brothers, we're going to suffer, man. Okay, never forget that. 2 Corinthians 4 and 17, for our light affliction... Which is but for a moment, our light affliction, that's what the Bible calls it, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, right? And that's why you got to be a visionary in this truth. You got to be able to see the things that are not seen. The only way you can do that is with your spiritual eye, man. See, we see the glory that we're going to get even before we get it. What was that first John three and two? Let's finish read that and then we'll, we'll go to first John three and two. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. So you gotta have you gotta be able to be a visionary to be in this knowledge is true. There's a scripture where it said that Yahweh Shai saw the glory he would receive. That's why he was able to endure the cross. The apostle Paul said that, roughly paraphrasing that scripture. Yahweh Shai saw the glory. That he was going to receive. Even before he received it. He saw it in his mind's eye. That's us man. We see the glory. That we're going to receive. Even before we have received it. For being in this knowledge. For being called to this truth. 
Yahweh Bashim Yahshai has called us to receive a great reward, but you got to believe it and you got to suffer for it. You got to believe it and you got to suffer for it righteously. That's how we get the prize, man. Okay? While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. There you go. Last forever. So the hell with these the, the, the false riches of this world. Look at look at the look at the turmoil you gotta go through to get it. Look at P. Diddy, man. At one time he was flying high. Now look at him. Now look at him. He's the butt of everyone's joke, man. And he's and he don't be surprised if he gets deleted. Cause he's on that hot seat, man. Hey, he lived that life. He sold his soul to the devil. This is what happens. And that's what these Israelites don't realize. No matter how high you fly in this world, if you're an Israelite, eventually the curses will catch up with you. Curse shall thou be when thou comest in. Curse shall thou be when thou goest out. You see that? So the scriptures don't lie, man. So that well, no, we don't want we don't want the uh, Esau's riches, man. He can keep that shit. We want the real riches. So we'll for now we'll suffer. Back to Hebrews two and ten. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory. That's us, to make their captain. To make the captain of their of their salvation perfect through sufferings like right now i'm suffering the noise that <laughs> i can't believe it man before i did this video it was quite man you could have heard a pin drop it is what it is the heavenly father for whom through this is the nlt the heavenly father for whom are through for whom and through whom everything was made chose to bring many children into glory and it was only right that he should make Yahushai through his suffering a perfect leader so wait a minute we become a perfect leader through suffering so why do suffering righteously for Yahushai's sake that is so why do so why do so many Israelites hate it try try to avert it try to skate by it <laughs> hey, Yashuan, man, this guy, he was all into it for the money. Yashuan, I always tell you about him. He made a statement. He said, I'm tired of being broke. Because when he came into the faith, he became broke. He started going through the suffering. He made a statement. He said, man, I'm tired of being broke. That's what he said. So when the money rolled in, he got corrupted with the money. This guy took, he had... $2,400 which he plopped down on buying three pairs of boots so wait a minute if you got $2,400 to spend on shoes just plop it down on, on the counter whatever hey give me three pairs of them that means you got some money ain't no way you're gonna be living from, from check to check you're getting daily bread type money and you're going to take that money and plop down on, to buy three pairs of shoes. Nah, man. So that shows me right there. And this is back in, yo, this is back in the early 1990s. $2,400. That's a lot of money, man. Especially back then. This cat, he took $2,400 and he bought himself three pairs of them long, tall riding boots that you see them polo them polo dudes wear those type boots and they were wearing them to the school too and them dudes were stuck they were stunting stunting and profiling on brothers right when the cell phones came in looked like a goddamn brick they had them cell phones okay they were styling and profiling man i remember it this is the early 1990s back then where them cats now yeah, there you go. There you go. Hebrews 2 and 10. The heavenly father for whom and through 
whom everything was made chose to bring many children into glory it and it was only right that he should make Yahweh through his suffering through his suffering never forget that man a perfect leader fit to bring them into their salvation so we're going to go we're going to go into our salvation through suffering brothers and your few sisters that desire desire to be righteous in this world man you're gonna make it through suffering some of you sisters you go through suffering you get made fun of girl you need to be out there you pretty girl you're in that hebrew israelite thing you need to be out there enjoying your life living your best life meaning being a whore that's what that means translation being a whore that's what your friends tell you nah sister you've been chosen to receive a greater blessing you know you find yourself a man in this truth and you stick with him through thick and thin and don't let your beauty get to you oh, I'm, I'm pretty i should be able to get more men than this guy i can get better better guys than this guy and that's not the way you want to think sister and don't listen to your friends a lot of you women you 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 are influenced by your friends what your friends say is more important than what your man says you know how your sisters get <clears throat> this thing of ours is about suffering man that's what it's about straight up and down man first peter four <laughs> first peter four i gotta make my voice louder to get over the noise that's going on back outside first peter four the fourth chapter and uh, the 12th verse beloved thinking not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you but rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Yahweh sufferings that's what this truth is all about man it's about Yahweh sufferings suffering for Yahweh sake that when his glory shall be revealed when is that going to happen when he comes back and gathers his elect that when his glory shall be revealed <coughs> excuse me ye ye may be glad also with exceeding joy see that let's read that in the nlt dear friends don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you instead be very glad for these trials make you partners with Yahweh and his suffering. There you go. And Yahweh, Apostle Paul said, if you don't suffer, you're a bastard. If you be without chastisement, roughly paraphrasing what Apostle Paul said, if we be without chastisement, then we are bastards and not sons. So yeah, man, we our mentality is there. Yahweh suffered, you're goddamn right, I'll, I'll suffer, just like my Lord suffered. So the same way my Lord was glorified, I'll be glorified as well. If I hold my integrity, like my Lord held his integrity. <clears throat> That's the way to think. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partners with Yahweh in his sufferings, in his suffering, so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all the world. Wow, that's powerful, man. And when is that gonna happen? When Yahweh Shai comes back with them chariots and them angels. That's when his glory is going to be revealed to the world. All right. 14 verse. If ye be reproached for the name of Yahweh Shai, which we are reproached. That's what we're going through. We give up the so-called pleasures of this life for this knowledge, this truth. We give up the so-called friends that are all into this world. Their religion is money. Money. You got to make that money, man. You got to make that paper, son. Yeah, well, that's their mentality. That's not our mentality. Our paper, our money is this knowledge, this truth. That's our money. And this, this knowledge, this truth indeed is money. Romans 11 and 33. Oh, oh, the depth and the riches. These are the real riches, man. The understanding of these scriptures. What, are you kidding me? The Bible is the most powerful book on the planet Earth. It was Theodore Roosevelt, president of the United States, former president of the United States. He said, he said a Bible education is much more much more worthy than a college education a bible education that's what he said <clears throat> matter of fact when you go into the history of colleges when colleges were first started it was started to teach the scriptures 
So check that out. Um, Romans 11 and 33 show you that the, this knowledge is the real riches. Okay. Romans 11, 33, it says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Heavenly Father. But we're not going to get that wisdom and knowledge of the Heavenly Father without the suffering. It's a package deal. There's no way you're going to get the wisdom and knowledge of the Heavenly Father and not suffer right along with it. If you think you can do that, then you're delusional. Okay? Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Heavenly Father, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. That's why they're riches. Because not too many people know them. Not too many people have been exposed to them. Okay? For who have known the mind of the Lord? There you go. Or who have been his counselor? And that's what we're learning. We're learning to think like the Lord thought. Okay? Through these scriptures. In the mindset of our Lord. But let's keep reading here. It says... If ye be reproached for the name of Yahweh, shall happy are ye for the spirit of and glory of the Heavenly Father resteth upon you. You see that? So it's, this knowledge of truth is definitely about suffering. On their part, he is evil spoken of. That's the world, the people of the world. They don't understand what this thing about us is all about. So of course they're going to ridicule it. They're going to scoff it. They're going to scorn at it. You know when they'll understand when all hell breaks loose and they see that we're being protected from the hell. They see that there's this invisible force working with us. Then they're going to want a desire to know what we're into. But then by then it's going to be too late. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. Absolutely. But let, here's the, here's the point. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. See that? So there's a certain way to suffer in this thing of ours. Yes, it is about suffering. But there's a certain way we have, we have to suffer in this ministry. Suffer righteously for Yahweh Shai's sake. But let, let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a, a busybody in other men's matters. <clears throat> Let's read that in the NLT. If you suffer, however, it must be... If, uh, uh, let me read that again. If you suffer, however, it must not be for murder. Right. So you commit murder, you, you get what you get, man. Shit. <laughs> Stealing, there you go. Making trouble, see? Because you got guys coming this day and they don't know how to contain themselves. They don't know how to, to discipline themselves. And they get themselves, they keep getting themselves in trouble. And then, oh man, I'm going through heaven. Nigga, you bring that hell on yourself, man. Okay? We don't go around looking for trouble. We don't go around acting like tough guys and all that, man. We don't do that shit. Okay? If you suffer, however, it must not be for murder, stealing, making trouble, or prying into another into other people's affairs. Right. We 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 stay to our we stay to ourselves. That's what a stoic does. He stays to himself. Okay. But it is no shame to suffer for being a Christian or to being a follower of Yahweh Shai. Praise Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, for the privilege of being called by his name and also the privilege of suffering. All right. Check that out. Check that out. <clears throat> so pretty much I'm going to end it there. There was uh, one scripture I wanted to go through. Uh, Luke 12. Well, we went into patience. You know, I showed you in the etymology, patience means to suffer. All right, if you didn't get enough of it, just go to the etym online, type in the word patience, you'll see really what the word means. Now, before I go, let's go to Luke 12 and 50. Because Yahweh Shai, he spoke about suffering. This is a statement that he made. All right, we can learn a lot from it too. Luke 12 and 50. Uh, let's see, be in readiness, look at that, it says be in readiness, Luke 12 and 50, <clears throat> oh, look at this, Yahweh Shai divides men, yeah, he, he, a lot of people think he, Yahweh Shai come to gather everybody together, <laughs> oh man, Yahweh Shai only cares about his elect, Luke 12 and 50, 
but I have a baptism. Now I explained to you what baptism is. No, learning this knowledge is truth is, is the true form of baptism. But I have a baptism to be baptized with. This is Yahweh Shai speaking. And how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Meaning all the hell that I'm catching, the sufferings that I'm going through until I accomplish it. See that? And it was accomplished when Yahweh Shai gave up the it ended culminated with him giving up the spirit on the cross because the last thing he said was it is finished it is done then he gave up the spirit then four days later three days but going into the fourth day he was risen up again by the heavenly father Yahweh. so his his time of suffering was over over he don't suffer no more now it's our turn to suffer and we're going to go through the same fate that Yahweh Shai went through we're going to be ridiculed and brought to, uh, you know, chastised and tormented and all of that, man. But through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, we pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai to give us the spirit to endure it, just like Yahweh Shai endured. So we can receive the glory. We want to receive that glory, man. We want to receive that glory that Yahweh Shai received. 50th verse in the NLT. I have a terrible baptism of suffering ahead of me and I am under a heavy burden until it is accomplished. And he was talking about eventually going on the cross. We're on our cross now, brothers, sisters that believe in this. We're on our cross now. Cross means burden. We're carrying our cross right now. Okay. Finally, Lamentations, the third chapter is a good way to end this. Because Jeremiah, that's why it's called the Lamentations of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. And these words were written by Baruch, his scribe. The Lamentations of Jeremiah. Listen to what Jeremiah says. Now, here's an example of one, who, a guy who caught nothing but hell being in the ministry. Jeremiah, at a very young age too, because he was called into the ministry at a very young age. He had to be about 12, 13 years old, somewhere around there. Lamentations, the third chapter, the 24th verse beginning there. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Right. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Right. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke is that word yoke in his youth, whatever it may be. Right? He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. Right. He, 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 you know, he signed up for it. You know, some guys they tap out saying, I didn't sign up for this. Yes, you did. You came in, into the knowledge, you would call into the knowledge, you call into the truth, you heard, you believed, you started speaking on it. Guess what came next? The affliction. But ah, you couldn't deal with the affliction. You said, ah, the hell with, the hell with this. Eight years ago, we had this guy, TEW444. This dude, man, he, he looked like one of them ancient prophets chiseled out, chiseled out of a rock. This dude, some of y'all remember that guy. He was out of... Louisiana, I think it was. Yeah, Louisiana, I think. And he used to make videos. He used to, <clears throat> he used to teach the scriptures and all that, man. And the first thing we noticed was he had that big ass beard, that big, that big uh, uh, Elijah type beard on his face. The first thing that's that kind of went was the beard. And change his total look, and then after a while, you didn't see him no more. To this very day, you don't. We don't know where the hell that guy's at. Okay, he tapped out, man. Couldn't deal with the suffering. You see, Lamentations three and twenty eight. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence, because he hath borne it upon him. Right. So we have to understand what we're involved in. He putteth his mouth in the dust. If so be, there may be hope. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled, he is filled full with reproach. That's why dudes tap out, man. 
Let's read that in the NLT. Let them turn the other cheek to those who strike them and accept the insults of their enemies. Right. The reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever. Right. But though he cause grief, and this is what you, you endure when you come into this, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. Yahweh Shai is perfect proof of that. For he doth not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men. And this knowledge is true. It's like an affliction. Okay. So I'm going to end it there. I, I believe I've said enough. You get the point. So let's get back to the title. The title is, what is this Hebrew Israelite ministry really all about? So by watching this video, now you have a, you have a good idea of what this truth is really all about, which is suffering. That's what it's about. The different types of suffering we go through. But like Peter said, we don't suffer as a murderer or a busybody or a troublemaker or evildoer. No, we suffer righteously, man, for Yahweh Shai's sake. We suffer tribulation. We suffer being insulted. We suffer uh, being slandered. That's part of the suffering. You be slandered, call names, and people insult you and all of that. Just because you're in this knowledge is truth. You see? But if we endure to the end, we're going to prevail, brothers, sisters. So with that, I'll say Shalom, and I'll see you in the next video.